surface integrals are the analog to line integrals, but now over a surface. Remember, we had scalar line integrals. Scalar line integrals, which gave us, you know, here's some curve C. And then we look at the function, however the function f of x, y is behaving over this curve. And then it gives us like the area of the curtain here, right? Or vector line integrals, which gave us, you know, we have some curve C. We have a vector field f. And then the vector line integral told us the work it takes to move a particle along this curve. We have these analogs to now surfaces S instead of just these curves C. And to do this, what did we need, right? When we were looking at line integrals, we needed, so we need a parameterization say R of T for T between A and B of C, right? We would represent this curve C using a parameterization. And now this is true because we need a parameterization. So to define surface integrals, both scalar and vector, we need a parameterization of surface S. And so, you know, let's imagine we have some surface, say here's my surface S. And I need to parameterize this surface, meaning at a given point, <clears throat> you know, if you'd like to think about this being in 3D space here, like X, Y, Z, you know, how do we parameterize a line? This R of T was a vector valued function. So if I can erase all this, R of T is a vector valued function, right? We have this curve C, and then R of T gave us vectors, right? R of T, which was like X of T comma Y of T. And then we looked at the terminal point of these vectors. The terminal point of all these vectors traced out a line, right? And so now, when we're looking at these vectors here that are going to parameterize our surface, and then the terminal points of all these vectors trace out a surface, well, we're going to need two parameters, right? When the curve C, C is a one-dimensional um, shape here, right? A curve is just one dimensional, but a surface is now two dimensional. And so we need two parameters. Let's call them U and V. And so we parameterize a surface. We say R of UV is equal to, and then like X of UV, Y of UV, and z of u v, where u is between values, say, a and b, and v is also between some values, say, like c and d. And these values here indicate what possible u and v uh, values may be plugged in to our parameterization of S. So R of UV here is the parameterization of a surface S. And so we, this definition here, 
we can give really quickly. D is going to be set of points U, V, and R2 such that, you know, A is between U, or excuse me, U is between A and B, and V is between C and D. We call this the parameter domain. Okay, and this is just describing rectangles here in the UV plane. This doesn't always have to be the case, you know, you could have like u between 0 and 2 pi. And so you could get like circles and and things like that. But just for right now, we're going to think about our parameter domain here, which is going to live in the uv plane, right? These possible values. This is called the parameter domain. And it's the possible points to plug in to our parameterization of a surface. And so now, we need to see some examples because parameterizing a surface can be a little tricky since there are two variables now. And so we need a pretty good list of examples here. So we can really understand what parameterizing surfaces looks like. So let's describe the following surfaces. Okay, so one, Let's describe a surface that's given by the parameterization R of UV equals cosine U, sine U, and V for U between negative infinity. So I guess it's not inclusive, right? U between negative infinity and infinity, and V between negative infinity and infinity. OK. So the best trick or technique to understanding parameterized surfaces is to hold variables or how about hold parameters? Hold each parameter constant. Okay, and so this is kind of my hint here, or this is a nice note to make. This is a technique to understanding parameterized surfaces to hold each parameter constant. And so what do we mean? Well, we have R of U V equals cosine U cosine, sorry, I don't know why I keep doing that, sine u v. Now, let's hold, uh, let's say we hold v constant first. And before holding v constant, let's look at like some particular v values. Let's look at v equals 0. Well, then r of u 0 is cosine u, sine u, zero. And so we know what this is, right? Uh, I think I, yeah, here, I made a small error. I would like u to vary between zero and two pi, my apologies. Um, so we also, you know, we have that u is varying between zero and two pi. Well, we know what the parameterization, now this is just single variable parameterization. So we're looking in the x, y plane, and this is a circle of radius one, right? Cosine u sine u parameterizes a circle of radius one. And what if we were to look at like v equals one, say? Well, then we have r of u one, which is cosine u sine u comma one. Well, this is still a circle of radius one, but it's at a different height now, right? So we have x, y, z, right? Here we have like x equals cosine u, y equals sine u, and z equals v. And so at height zero, we have a circle of radius one. At height one, we have a circle of radius one. 
And you can see as you change V here for arbitrary V equals K, you're going to get the parameterization cosine U sine U K, which means at height K, you have a circle of radius one. Always, right? And now this is what we've obtained from holding V constant. We get like this infinite stack of circles. Now let's see what happens when we hold U constant. When we hold U constant, well, let's first look at like, again, some particular values. So if we look at like U equals zero, well, then this is R of zero V. Cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, and then V is still V. And so this is in the X, Z plane because Y is zero and we're at one V, right? And we just get this line. X is fixed at one and then Z can vary. And if we look at like U equals pi over two, we would get like R of pi over two V equals zero, one V, right? And so let's, let's translate these now to this picture that we were drawing. In the XZ plane, when X is one, Y is zero, Z can vary. It can go up and down forever and ever, right? When we looked at uh, U equals pi over two, that's in the YZ plane, right? And you're at one in Y and then Z can vary again. And so, whoops. And so we get this line here. And now what you can do is you can kind of see what's happening. And if you let U just be K, well then you're getting U of K V is cosine K sine K V. And what this is, is this is a vertical line uh, parallel to the z-axis at a certain spot on the unit circle. And so because of that, we've mapped, whoops, we've mapped out a cylinder because every spot on the unit circle, you get a line. And so you can see this parameterization This was a right circular cylinder. Of radius one. And so this is an example of a parameterization of a surface. And you can see it's kind of. You need to go through multiple examples. To start to get the feel for like. When you look at a parameterization you can say, okay, well, I either recognize what kind of surface that's going to be, whether it be like a cylinder or a cone or a sphere or something, or you say, well, now I know how to parameterize at least or understand a given parameterization. So let's look at a different example here because this was that was just for a cylinder, right? There's plenty of surfaces. <clears throat> so let's look at understanding the surface given by the parameterization R of UV equals U cosine V U sine V U squared. Okay, where U is going between zero and infinity and V is going between zero and two pi. All right. Let's do our technique of holding the parameters constant, right? So first let's hold U constant. So if we look at say U equals zero, well then we get R of zero V equals well, that's going to be zero, zero, zero. So that's not very helpful. Let's look at R uh, U equals uh, one, right? So if we look at U equals one, and then we're at the point one V, well, this is cosine V 
sine v and 1, right? This is in the x, y, z coordinate system. X and y are cosine v sine v for v between 0 and pi over 2. So this is, so when, when u was 0, we had a point, right? You, I said when u was 0, we would get 0, 0, 0. So let's keep that in mind. And then when u is 1, we're at z equals 1. And we have cosine v sine v, which is a circle of radius 1. OK, so at the origin, we're a point. And then at the height 1, we have a circle of radius 1. Now, what about 2? What about like u equals 2? Well, then r of 2v is going to be 2 cosine v, 2 sine v, and then 4, because it's u squared, right? And so we're up here somewhere at 4, maybe. Then you can see we have a circle of radius 2, because it's at the height z equals 4. And then x equals 2 cosine v, y equals 2 sine v. You know, from polar coordinates, that's r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So this is a circle of radius 2. And you can see that at u equals k, in general, this is going to be a circle of radius k at height k squared, right? And so let's draw this picture a little better here. So at 1, we had a circle of radius 1. At 2, or at 4, we had a circle of radius 2. And so you could see at 9, we'd have a circle of radius 3. And then the arbitrary formula here is at height k squared, you have a circle of radius k, right? And then at the origin, we had the point. And so holding u constant, we understood, we understand, it kind of gets you like the skeleton of the surface, right? I can see, okay, well, I have a collection of circles stacked on top of each other that it's growing as I move up, right? And now, what if we hold v constant? So let's hold v constant. So if we had, let's say like v equals zero, well then we'd have r of u zero equals, well we have u cosine v and cosine of zero is one. So this would be u and then sine of zero is zero u squared. This is the equation z equals x squared, right? Because we have x equals u and then z equals u squared. And so that means in the xz plane, we have a parabola. Right. And now let's think about like v equals pi over 2. When v equals pi over 2, we have r of u pi over 2 gives us uh, 0 u u squared. And so this is the line z equals y squared. And then so in the yz plane, we have z equals y squared. And you can see in general, like when v equals k, this is going to give us a parabola, but just at different points along the unit circle, right? And so because of that, what we're getting here is um, an elliptic paraboloid. Right? Because you can see we're kind of getting like on, at each direction around the unit circle, we're getting the parabola or we're getting a parabola. And then we're also tracing out these circles, which means we're getting an elliptic paraboloid. Another way to see this is to um, understand what's going on with the parameter, right? We had x equals u cosine v, y equals u sine v. And so if we took x squared plus y squared, you'll see that we get 
u squared cosine squared v plus u squared sine squared v, which is u squared cosine squared v plus sine squared v. Well, that's one, and so we get u squared. And so you can see, well, u was z, so we get x squared plus y squared equals z squared, which is our elliptic paraboloid here. Okay, so here's another example. Um, the third one I would like to give is Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. This is not z squared. This is just z, right? Because z was u squared. We have z is u squared. And so that means we get x squared plus y squared equals u squared, but u squared is z. And then so when you plug in z, you have z equals x squared. Okay, my apologies for that. Next, let's give... Now, instead of taking the parameterization and then understanding what the surface is, let's define a parameterization. So let's give a parameterization. Of the cone. X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared. Lying on or above the plane z equals negative 2 and here's where i where i caught my mistake i knew that x squared plus y squared equals z squared was a cone and then when i came over here and saw that i had claimed that x squared plus y squared equals z squared was a, an elliptic paraboloid i said wait a minute that's not right so it made me come back and rethink here and I said, okay, well, wait a minute. U squared is just Z. And so the equation for the elliptic paraboloid um, was X squared plus Y squared equals Z. Okay, and so now for a cone, the equation is X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared, which is like this, right? This is a cone we have here. So we have x, y, z. But remember, this is on or above the plane z equals negative 2. So we're actually going down to negative 2 somewhere. You can imagine the plane z equals negative 2 under the x, y plane. And we have this cone here. Right? And so we want to parameterize this cone um, on and above the plane z equals negative two. And <clears throat> usually what I like to do when giving a parameterization is I like to pick one parameter to indicate the height and then another parameter to indicate the trace of the surface at that height. So let's let u be the height parameter, i.e. z equals u. So it's literally just indicating what z value we are at. And then what we can do is when we're at a given z value, we're at a given height, you know, you take the intersection of the plane z equals u and then you have a curve right this trace you're going to get from intersecting your surface with the plane z equals u is going to be a curve this is a curve that can be described with a single parameter right and so we can use the other parameter v this will be the parameter of the 2D trace 
at height z equals u, right? And so let's think about this. If we're at the height z equals u, of a cone, and we intersect this plane z equals u with the cone. Well, then we get the equation that x squared plus y squared equals u squared. That means at the height z equals u, we have a circle of radius u because that's exactly what this formula tells us, right? x squared plus y squared equals u squared is a circle of radius u. How do we parameterize a circle of radius u? Well, we need a new parameter. We need this parameter v. So the parameter, or so the parameterization of this circle is going to be given by u cosine v, so like r of v equals u cosine v, comma u, whoops, u sine v, right? Because this is how you parameterize a circle of radius u for v going between 0 and 2 pi. Thus, we have, because at the height u, u is constant, right? But when u is varying, when we can let u go up and down, then we have our parameterization r of u v, where u can vary as well as v. And so at the height u, we have x equals u cosine v, y equals u sine v. But again, this is at the height u. So u, this is our parameterization. Now we need the bounds, right? Well, we know v is between 0 and 2 pi. But then if u is directly indicating height, and we're on or above the plane z equals negative 2, that means we have that u must be greater than or equal to negative 2, right? And so these are our bounds. Here, along with the parameterization. And you can see now that like, okay, if I, if I pick a parameter to purely indicate height, and then at that height, I parameterize whatever my curve, whatever my trace is with the other parameterization, then you combine them both to get the parameterization of the entire surface. Okay, so there is one more well, there's a few more examples. So here's four. Let's just look at the parameterization of a sphere. So let's say we have a sphere of radius rho. So x, y, z here. We need a parameterization for this, right? Well, we have spherical coordinates, and we're going to use these spherical coordinates to our advantage. So rho is a fixed radius, which means the parameterization can be r of theta phi, where x is rho cosine theta sine phi. These are our conversion formulas for polar coordinate or for spherical coordinates. We have y is rho sine theta sine phi, and then we have z is rho cosine phi. And so here's the idea. When you come down an angle phi and look at the a circle, 
parallel to the xy plane, this is a circle of radius rho sine phi. And so you can see here we have rho sine phi times cosine theta, rho sine phi times sine theta. That's the parameterization for this circle. And then the parameterization for the height is, well, going to be this height. And you can see this radius was rho sine phi. And so the height is rho cosine phi because we get this right triangle here. And that's the idea for the parameterization of the circle is it's simply using, so well, first theta sweeps between zero and two pi and then uh, phi sweeps between zero and pi for the bounds, right? Um, but this is the idea of using phi and theta as our parameterizations for the sphere. The last example I'd like to talk about is the parameterization parameterization, whoops, of just an arbitrary z equals f of x, y, okay? If you have like this arbitrary z equals f of x, y, then the simplest parameterization is to let x be u, y be v, and then z is f of u, v. And so you get the parameterization for an arbitrary z equals f of x, y. You can always parameterize this by just saying, well, r of u, v is u, v, f of u, v. Okay. All right. So there are, in my opinion, some of the most important examples for understanding how to parameterize a surface. And this is very important if you would like to understand how to set up and compute surface integrals at all. Because the construction and using them relies on being able to parameterize a surface. I'd like to give two definitions before we break for this video. And then in the next video, we'll finally start setting up um, some surface integrals. So here's a couple definitions that we'll need just for the next video. So R of UV, which again is usually given by X of UV, Y of UV, Z of UV, is a regular parameterization. if the partial derivative of R with respect to U cross the partial derivative of V with respect to V is non-zero, right? So remember, this is a vector valued function. And so we can think about the derivatives um, with respect to U and with respect to V, right? Which these are vectors. And so the cross product is also a vector. And so we really only wanna restrict our attention to regular parameterizations which are ones where this cross product here is non-zero. And we'll see why when we're setting up the uh, surface integrals. Another definition is R of UV is smooth if this cross product is not zero for all U and V in the domain. And so what a regular parameterization is, is just something where the cross product of these partial derivative vectors is not identically zero, right? But you could have a cross product where it's a formula and then certain values of U and B yield zero. Most of the values yield something non-zero. But a parameterization is smooth if that's not even the case, right? So it's no matter what U and V you plug in, you will not get a result of zero for the cross product here. And we'll be restricting our attention to smooth and regular parameterizations as we define surface integrals in the next video.